So it's no secret that most seniors are a little unfocused at this time of the year. With only 27 days of high school left, not like anyone's counting or anything, there's a lot to think about. In between constant conversation about prom, senior ditch day, the senior picnic, and graduation, it's impressive we have time to think about the big college decision. Senior Most Awards are one classic senior tradition, where we vote to give our classmates titles like Best Dressed, Most Likely to be President, and Most Likely to be a Glen Ellen Mom or Dad. After reading the scripture for today, it is pretty clear what Saul would get if he were a member of the class of 2013. Saul would undoubtedly win biggest 180, meaning he has transformed the most since freshman year. <laughs> it's no secret why Saul would, would earn this award. He changes from a vengeful, murderous man to a devout man filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Not to mention the fact that he becomes blind, regains his sight, and also changes his name. Now, I don't know any classmates who have undergone such a visible spiritual transformation, but I do know that high school is a time of immense change. Over the past four years, we have gained more maturity and begun to better understand the world around us. Not every change arrives with flashing lights and banners. Most developments over the past few years have been subtle. Unlike Saul's split-second transformation, development during high school is a long process. But our personal changes are not over yet. I think that everyone continues to adapt as life goes on. Every morning when I wake up, I feel pretty much the same as I did the day before. However, when I think about myself during freshman year and years before, I know that I am very different. There is no definite moment when I became interested in politics and human rights, or when I started loving tomatoes, but these developments just happened somewhere along the way. Change does not have a definite beginning or end. It is constant. The past two spring breaks, my mom has spent her birthday in the car with me on a harrowing trip through a mountain pass. Now, some of you might already think the Bear Girls are a little eccentric, but let me explain. These trips have been part of my great college quest, where we drive to far out locations to check out my options for the next four years. As we wound up into the mountains of San Bernardino National Forest a few weeks ago, my mom mentioned the cliche that the journey is the destination. Although this may seem silly, I think it is a monumental truth of life. Most people do not experience instantaneous metamorphoses like Saul does, but rather see life as continually evolving. My spring break did not involve me getting a killer tan at a destination resort. Instead, I saw endless stretches of desert, hiked up a mountain, chatted with rock climbers, and heard local bands. No moment defined my trip, but no moments can be forgotten either. I like to think of my life this way as there is not one favorite memory, because they all culminate together to create the powerful experience. Our annual work camp is not a destination trip. <laughs> Unless you count cramped sleeping quarters and cooking out of crock pots for a week, a destination vacation. <laughs> However, it is definitely a journey, and a powerful one at that. Last summer, we spent our week in St. Louis, and I was assigned to the porch crew, where we worked to rebuild a rotting porch on the front of an old lady's house. Hammering in the final nail on that, French porch, on that front porch was a fulfilling moment, but I have stronger memories from my week. I will never forget washing dishes for hours on end at the bridge while the rest of the kids visited the St. Louis Zoo. <laughs> or hearing Patrick's story of his experience with homelessness, or meeting the gregarious Tony, a young boy who came to the bridge with his family for a warm meal. Work camp is a week of change, but I don't think any of us catch the, re re the revelations in the moment. At the last circle time on Friday night, we look back with awestruck eyes at the realization of how much every day meant. Journeys are not solitary ventures, Although solitude can be powerful at times, the souls that surround us have great effects. As we heard in the scripture, God strikes Saul with blindness 
and then a disciple helps him understand the Holy Spirit. God sends the disciple Ananias to Saul, and it is this man that restores the sight of Saul. Saul would not have understood the Holy Spirit without the help of another to guide him. Mentors have the incredible power of helping us to get where we're going faster than we could get there alone. I would not be the Fiona that I am without the guidance of many individuals. Now, these are not people who have merely told me what to think or agreed with my own thoughts, but more importantly, challenged me to push myself and my beliefs. Last year, my environmental science teacher told me I was a debate bully, but that it was a compliment. <laughs> Although I felt this might be a harsh term, I do know that I thrive off of difficult discussions because they help me learn. My mentors push me to have these tough conversations, either out loud or in my own mind. At a past Sleepout Saturday, a debate between some of the youth, myself included, and a few adults over how we view other situations in life ensued. I'm going to admit it got heated as we went back and forth making minimal progress in the discussion. I, in the moment, I was frustrated with my perception of the adult's inability to validate my own points. But in retrospect, this conversation was crucial as it expanded my understanding of different perceptions on the world, but also helped me to develop, develop my own personal views. Saul never expected that he was going to help spread the word and change the history of Christianity. Ananias helped him towards the path even though Saul didn't see it coming. God was able to understand Saul's heart and already saw the path in front of him. I know God can see my gifts, but sometimes I have trouble personally. Luckily, my mentors often can help me see myself clearly. I recently discussed my college thoughts with a few incredible teachers like Lombard West. They made me start to realize how to think about my choice, just showing me the direction that I have been headed in all along. So know that change does not have to be lonely. We merely need to reach out to the hands around us on this crazy journey of life. So as I start to debate with my friends over who in the class deserves wish you dated or most likely to be the next Donald Trump, the great changes ahead of me are constantly in the back of my mind. Even if I try my hardest, it is nearly impossible to imagine what I will be like one year from now or 10 years or 50. Saul never saw himself becoming Paul and spreading Christianity, but I think that is the most important lesson of all. Transformation can be incredibly and unexpectedly powerful. I have just started to delve into life, with my faith journey starting to really develop here at First Congregational. Looking back, I value every conversation at coffee hour, every deep small group discussion, and every work camp trip. But everything is about to change. That's a good thing. Faith is not faith unless it is challenged and given the chance to evolve and grow. Life is going to affect my belief system, my view on the world, my relationships, my fears, and my dreams. I'm so excited for everything that is ahead of me. I know the journey of life will be painful and scary at times, but also rewarding, full of joy, and of course, fun. I hope we can all remember the power of change and learn to embrace it, trusting God that we will make it through the great journey of life. Amen.